am audible yes ma'am you are audible okay. so please allow my screen sharing i have requested screen sharing can you please allow uh, yes ma'am ma'am can you try now okay thank you okay so uh, my topic today is artificial intelligence in iot based sensor networks and actually this is a very broad topic and this topic itself includes three major emerging research fields one is sensor networks in fact wireless sensor networks and the second one is iot internet of things and then artificial intelligence and uh, in this topic in this webinar um, we will discuss about how artificial intelligence is intelligently incorporated in iot based sensor networks so it's just a brief overview within the stipulated time and these are the details of uh, my company lis intelligence solutions and we have two directors myself and nima bibush i hope uh, those who are already in iterpoli are familiar with that name and overview at first we will just uh, go through industry 4.0 and 5.0 and then uh, Uh, if we have to get a knowledge about artificial intelligence in iot based sensor systems first of all we have to have a basic idea of what is sensors then wireless sensor networks and in between this one hour session uh, we will be engaged with uh, some demos and examples and then internet of things automation artificial intelligence and finally edge a so by the time we will arrive at 8 i hope you will clearly get some idea or you will clearly get a start point of how artificial intelligence there is the beauty how artificial intelligence can be incorporated in iot based sensor networks okay so industry 4.0 means the world of automation and actually this include total 10 items starting from here artificial intelligence internet of things cyber security cloud computing additive manufacturing mixed reality big data and when it comes to internet of things actually if you count here we have only nine items but when it comes to internet of things sensors or wireless sensor networks is equally important so and out of these 10 items we can bundle some similar items together uh, that is internet of things wireless sensor networks autonomous robots mixed reality or uh, the very common virtual reality augmented reality and all that uh, so these are all hardware related parts in industry 4.0 or uh, if you have to be provisioned in these areas you have to get used with the hardware sensors uh, robotics and all and then additive manufacturing i would say that also little bit related to hardware but other the uh, other the first bundle uh, closely related to embedded systems and this additive manufacturing in fact this deals with uh, uh, prototyping 3d printing and all and then 
artificial intelligence and big data analytics, we can bundle these two together and these two deals with the, all the software part which incorporates, which imparts human intelligence to the hardware systems. And then blockchain, the remaining blockchain, cybersecurity, cloud computing, we can bundle all these three. These are purely software or computer science related topics. So if you want to uh, become proficient uh, as an engineer in industry 4.0, in the world of industry 4.0, you should be proficient in any of these or any of these bundles. So that is the overall view of industry 4.0. And going to industry 4.0, uh, sorry, industry 5.0, we know what is first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, third industrial revolution, fourth industrial revolution that we have already familiarized. And now we are at the brim of fourth industrial revolution or uh, concerning developed countries, they are already at the beginning of fifth industrial revolution. It is personalizable autonomous manufacturing. So fourth industrial revolution, it reduced the world of automation. And fifth means personalizable autonomous manufacturing. That is, uh, for example, if you are going to buy a Honda car, uh, maybe a Honda City car, your neighbor is also purchasing Honda City car, your cousin is also uh, purchasing Honda City car. So if it is getting personalized, so if you are in 5.0, uh, you, your neighbor and your cousin are getting three different customized Honda City cars. Both have, all these three cars have the label Honda City, but these cars are customized for according to your needs. That is personalizable autonomous manufacturing. So we are in that world. Everything we are going to get is personalized. So very recently, uh, one company has, one startup has released this Strom R3 electric car. And if you go through uh, the website of that, you can see Strom R3, the personal electric car. And if you go through the website, you can see uh, what are the personalized items. How can you customize your car? So uh, in that way, in near future, in near future, whatever you purchase, not only car, any electronic gadget you purchase, it will be customized according to your personal needs. So that is the beauty of industry 5.0. Okay, so now we are getting into the topic. So first of all, what is senses? I hope you all are familiar with what is a sensor. A sensor converts a physical phenomenon into a, excuse me, okay. A sensor converts a physical phenomenon into a measurable signal. So uh, whatever be the physical phenomenon. So here comes the um, world of automation and customized product and prototype development. Everything relies on senses. The basic uh, or the primost component in those types of systems are a sensor. So whatever physical phenomenon, unless you are able to convert a physical phenomenon into a measurable signal, or to be frank, to be direct, unless you are able to convert a physical phenomenon, uh, not convert, unless you are uh, able to take that physical phenomenon into your computer or into your processing unit, you can't do anything. You can't do any data analysis or data manipulation or anything. And then, in fact, you can't do any sort of automation. So the basic thing is a sensor 
which converts a physical phenomenon into a measurable signal. Why we have to convert a physical phenomenon into a measurable signal is because you have to take it, take that into your processing unit. At this point, we can say you have to take that into your computer for further processing and analysis. And please keep in mind the terms data analytics and all, because data analytics directly lead you to the world of artificial intelligence. So here, a number of uh, physical phenomena are given vibration. So vibration, if you tap on your table, they produce a vibration. But how much vibration this produced by a single tap with your hand on the table? So if you want to know exactly, so for example, uh, uh, you are developing a system, uh, you are developing just a, a, a IoT prototype that by just tapping the door, um, the door has to open. So in that case, uh, just imagine, just imagine that scenario. So just uh, if you just tap and that vibration has to be acquired in your processing unit or in your computer, and then the computer will measure uh, the vibration and it will check with a certain threshold, whether he is purposefully tapping, uh, knocking the door to open the door or it's an accident hit. So in that case, we will uh, a simple algorithm, we will uh, develop a simple programming code saying if the threshold is greater than uh, this vibration threshold is greater than some level, then open the door. So in that case, that vibration, you have to get into some measurable signal. Most probably it will be voltage or sometimes uh, current. So all these, uh, this uh, gas, chemical, gas, acoustic, sound, flow, humidity, moisture, water, or motion, velocity, force, pressure, et cetera. Everything, if it has to be converted to a measurable signal or in general, either a voltage or current, you need a sensor. If you want to convert vibration to corresponding voltage or current, you need a vibration sensor like that. If you want to uh, convert the proximity position, um, then you need a proximity sensor, that's all. And the senses can be classified into analog and digital senses. Analog sensor, it will directly uh, provide analog voltages or current signals. And uh, uh, depending on the data sheet, all these senses have their own data sheet. And if you go through the data sheet, you will get an idea about the resolution of the sensor. That is, uh, uh, what is the minute change of voltage? Uh, that is, uh, for example, uh, uh, it is saying uh, uh, one, uh, the force, force is one Newton corresponds to one volt. That is the, that is the minute variation corresponds to one or the minute variation the sensor is able to record is one newton which corresponds to one volt so if the sensor output is one volt if you convert back into SI unit it will be one newton like that so like that if you go through the data sheet you will get the conversion mechanism and then we have digital senses also digital senses we will get some digital values and um, if you go through the data sheet, digital values may be, uh, it, it, the sensor is a 32 bit digital sensor, maybe uh, first some bits corresponds to parity bits, some other bits corresponds to sign bits, and maybe data is say, for example, from 16 to 25 bits only have data. So the, the basic thing is you have to extract the 16 to uh, 28 bits, and then you have to convert it back to uh, corresponding binary to digit. And then you have to add the parity sign bits and all. Ultimately, after all these conversion process, uh, which is clearly written in the data sheet, 
you will be able to convert this digital value for uh, the series of ones and zeros. If it is a 32 bit sensor, at a time it will produce series of 32 bits, ones and zeros and that you will be able to convert it into corresponding SA units. Then only it will be meaningful. So whatever be the sensor, whether it is analog or digital, your first and primary aim is to yeah, go through the data sheet and you develop the conversion algorithm. And that algorithm has to be coded and using the code, you have to convert that output provided by the sensor to the corresponding SA unit. Okay, that is the sensor part. So in that way, uh, for a flight, uh, if the senses, position senses, height uh, speed, uh, senses provide the values. Values means either voltage values or digit, uh, digital values of position, height, speed, temperature, location, etc. The computer will uh, the algorithm or the code you have written in your computer will convert these signals, these voltage values or digit values into corresponding uh, exact SA unit, exact output values, which will uh, control the engine, which will control the engine speed, motor rotation, uh, the flap, uh, the wings and all. Okay, so uh, before getting into the world of IoT, I don't know how many of you are very proficient in all these. Uh, you, you have to get into, you have to develop your own uh, small uh, systems like this Bluetooth car. And uh, in fact, we have a, our family has a YouTube channel and This is the Bluetooth card demo by my son. You can watch when you have time. So this is the starting point. So uh, my son is just controlling the uh, Bluetooth car uh, with his mobile phone. And this is the front end. This is the APK built. And using this APK, he is controlling uh, that is, this Bluetooth car is remotely controlled using the mobile application. And here, uh, the items required is some motors and motor drivers and Bluetooth module. Okay. And these are different types of senses. And then uh, this is line follower robot. Maybe you are already familiar with this, but try to develop your own line follower robot and your own Bluetooth car. Or... So you can see without any manual intervention with the help of IR sensor, so the only sensor included in this line follower robot is IR sensor. And by programming, by using a program and controlling the IR sensor, this robot is following that black path. So the details you can go through the YouTube link. And then coming to wireless sensor network. So wireless sensor network is group of spatially dispersed and dedicated senses for monitoring and recording the physical conditions of the environment. So that is, this is a standalone system, I would say. That is, you can say it has a sensor and if a sensor uh, has to be interfaced with a processor, it, it, it needs a ADC. That is why if you are familiar with the Arduino boards and all, so in the earlier Bluetooth car and line follower robot, uh, the skeleton of the system is an Arduino. So Arduino is the very basic processor, or I would say it's the beginner's processor. 
So that Arduino board, uh, if you go through the specifications, you will see it has an ADC, it has a 10 bit ADC. So it has since you has a, since it has a 10 bit ADC inbuilt, you don't need to worry about uh, a separate ADC. You just need to connect the sensor. Uh, but the basic thing is since there is a sensor and there, there will be an ADC, uh, uh, since you need to connect a sensor to the processor and then a transceiver like the Bluetooth car, we have this Bluetooth module as a transceiver. And if you want to make it as a standalone system, you need a power unit. So uh, maybe um, you need a battery like the Bluetooth car and line follower robot, or uh, if you want to fix it as, uh, as, in a, as a constant, uh, standalone system like a pollution control uh, system you are developing or a weather monitoring station you are developing at your uh, premises. Uh, maybe you can use a solar panel and from the solar power you can convert that uh, to the uh, for the necessary and sufficient power required for the entire unit. So that is wireless sensor unit. So the entire uh, package corresponds to a sensor node, which transmit the data to the internet or the cloud using any wireless gadget and the administrator will process at the other end. And then internet of thing, internet of things, the basic definition is it is a network of physical objects having the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human to human or human to computer inter interaction. Uh, that is, uh, for example, uh, if a thief, if, a, if an intruder is entering into your home, uh, as soon as the intruder enter, enters your home, uh, some alarm will be active and uh, you will get, uh, you uh, hope you are, I, uh, say you are at that time you are at your office and you will soon get a notification at your mobile phone and using the senses if you uh, you can even connect to the nearest police you don't need to connect it. that senses will automatically give some notification to nearest police station and the police vehicle will automatically reach to your home without any human intervention so that is Internet of Things. Internet of Things means the senses or the wireless sensor network that will act without any or that will transfer data without any human interfer intervention. Like as I said earlier, when an intruder enters your home without any human intervention, it will automatically detect, okay, this is an intruder. Uh, by just uh, capturing his image and matching the database already saved and it will automatically identify, yes, it is a intruder and it will, since it is an intruder, the program we have already set in the processor will give a signal to, will pass a signal. If uh, the program will be like this, if, uh, if identified as intruder, send a notification to the patients, to the um, husband's or wife's mobile phone. And that husband's and wife's mobile phones are already saved in the code. Okay, this is the kind of internet of things. And then the world of automation. In this figure, you can see uh, some robotic arms are moving uh, the cartons placed here without any human intervention. So nowadays, this is, as I said earlier, this is the world of automation. And the most impressive thing about automation system is that they have some specialist features to do even the tasks which are impossible or dangerous for people. For example, mining jobs and all. Uh, uh, you are already familiar with the firefighting robots and all. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, before, just before Corona, I got the opportunity to visit Japan and there we have visited Mazda car factory and it was really 
an exciting experience. So there you can see how automation, how this car manufacturing is done in completely automatic way without any human intervention. So uh, here you can see uh, a set of robotic arms are fixing some screw, screws and even doing welding operations and everything for the car. And And once it is done, you can see it is that car is automatically moved and the other car come to that position and the robotic arms will do the same job for the next car. And you can see there is no human intervention there. And when I have seen this in um, Hiroshima, Japan, in Mazda car factory, I, re I really excited seeing this, how this is possible without any human intervention. And the arrival of artificial intelligence and data science make it possible for automating even the most complex jobs. And it aims to act smartly like individuals. And so, so the best is example of uh, artificial uh, wireless sensor networks, IoT, and artificial intelligence combining all these three is self-driving cars. And this is another video produced by our YouTube channel. You can watch it later. So in that video, it, it is clearly explained how self-driving cars work. And this is uh, just a demo of Tesla self-driving car. In fact, this Tesla, you can see the steerings are automatically turned. So, uh, and based on the curves and turns in the road, uh, and it, it is automatically, the steering is automatically turning and seeing that traffic signal, it is automatically stopping. So here, um, the map, the destination place is already saved in the in this uh, self driving car and based on the uh, based on the path from source to destination place uh, the senses will work that is it has some uh, vision senses image capturing senses uh, at uh, all over this car's uh, peripheral and the, it will automatically capture the scenes and the processor will uh, the processor will process these images in real time and based on the signals based on the result based on the analysis of the images the processor will produce the output okay turn five degree turn the steering five degree like that it will automatically provide the result or okay in uh, just uh, uh, just in front of the car, there is another car, just stop. Like that, it will automatically produce the results. And uh, uh, just imagine all these imaging senses will produce thousands of images at a time. And it has to process, the processor has to process it within a fraction of seconds. Maybe within microseconds, it has to process and it has to produce the output. So think about the processing time. So maybe you have already familiarized, you have already done some image processing projects and 
just imagine the time your system will take for processing such a images and then what is artificial intelligence as the name in place it is a branch of computer science that aims to create intelligent machines that work and react like humans so a applications the very common speech recognition you are already familiar is with the alexa and then face detection your mobile already have this face detection capability product recognition nowadays uh, most of us are fond of uh, online purchases and we are already familiar with the product recommendation and then this roomba robot maybe you are already familiar with this so just go through the titles here and this intelligently incorporate ai iot senses and everything you can see this even automatically recharges once its job is over it is going towards the adapter and it is automatically recharging and you can schedule the cleaning time and it will clean even when you are away you don't want to worry about cleaning and everything if you have a roomba robot okay so what is artificial intelligence at this point i will skip these portions and if i have time i will come back to that anyway just remember these two figures so this is the conventional programming method that is we will fit the system for the processing unit with the program with the piece of code we have written and the data we have with us and it will produce some output that is the conventional method but in a method it will learn from data we will pro produce the we will provide the output and data for the computer and it will develop a model so model is the output for the a based system okay so uh, you might have heard about these teams artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning data science big data everything so all these we can bundle together so uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and when it comes to artificial intelligence you can't avoid data science or big data analytics because even if you are processing you are developing a a based system or you are developing a code using machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms these are two different categories of algorithms so that the system will get artificial intelligence so these are different algorithms so whatever algorithm we are using whether machine learning based algorithm or deep learning based algorithm data plays a crucial role in any of the algorithm so that the system will get artificial intelligence so that is why data science is a 
a uh, is another vast subject and big data analyst or data scientist is a high paid job because before just dumping your data as i said earlier data is one of the input to develop an ai based system or developing an ai based algorithm but you can't just dump your data so that don't think that your computer is going to produce your desired model or the your system is going to get the ability to think intelligently that data need to be fine tuned the data need to be cleaned pre processed in a way that it should be most suitable for your particular application so for what particular application you are building a ai based system accordingly based on your intelligence based on human intelligence you have to clean and pre process the data that is why data science is a very emerging research field so even if you know n number of machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms that doesn't provide you a very good ai algorithm in fact you have to be proficient of data tuning pre processing and all that crazy jobs dealing with data okay so here okay i will come to that later this is a film made by ai so uh, you will say ai is an algorithm which imparts human intelligence but ai has gone far beyond that or far beyond our expectations and here this is a film sun spring you can just google it sun spring is a 2016 science fiction film entirely written by artificial intelligence so it is an a bot using neural network and you can watch this later and uh, as i said earlier one of the input one input for the ai algorithm is output what is our desired output and the only other input we have to feed is data so here whatever be the application we are going to develop okay we are uh, developing a home a based home automation system or a self driving car whatever be the application we are going to develop first and foremost what we have to think is what type of data we need what are the data i have to feed because that is the only input in order for you to develop a intelligent system so you have to always as an ai engineer what you have to do is you have to always worry about the data what type of data i have to feed so for this ai based film a film made by ai just imagine what type of data they have fed so that that ai bot will automatically develop a movie without any human intervention so i will just show the first part okay see this was trained the data fed for this particular application is loads of texts and emails lot that means in fact lakhs or millions of texts or millions of words are the only input fed to this ai bot to develop a film and then it is trained in such a way that it has provided lot of texts and emails and tries to guess what it is going to type next okay so that is the data so as an ai engineer one should be always curious about the data you are going to fed if your data is not good 
or if your data is not apt for that particular application, you are not going to get a very intelligent uh, system for your particular application. So always keep in mind. So I'm just skipping this. And these are the components of AA. These are some of the application. And as I said earlier, uh, you can develop the output of this AA-based algorithm is not just the output as like conventional method. It is a model. A model you have to create and this AA model. You can just say this is the A system we have developed for our particular application. Or this is the this model is the A board mentioned here. So in that model, if you fit once the training is over, if you fit with the thousands of words, it will automatically generate a script for a film. So the, these are the outputs we are creating and you can develop models based on deep learning, machine learning, neural networks, etc. And the software hardware for training and running models. So when it comes to softwares or hardware or the hardware requirement, since we are processing massive data like the A based short film, they have developed they have fed with the millions of words and texts and emails. So in order to train that AA bot with the millions of AA bot means in order to train that processor with the millions of texts and emails, we need heavy machines. That is GPUs, graphic processing unit, parallel processing tools, cloud data storage and compute platforms and programming language. The most common as a beginner, the most common programming language is Python, then Java. And if you just do it in a uh, SOC system on chip, SOC device or an ARM processor or a high level microcontroller, you can't use Python. You have to go for C programming, the very basic C programming. Okay, these are components of AA. And then our topping is artificial intelligence in iot based sensor network we are coming to that point so last 15 minutes is dedicated for ai in iot based sensor network so we know now we know what is sensor networks what is iot based sensor networks and what is ai now we are going to get to know how this A, artificial intelligence is intelligently incorporated into IoT based sensor networks. So the conventional way of processing is say you have an IoT based system like our Roomba robot or like our self-driving car. It has, as I said earlier, uh, n number of senses uh, and uh, um, uh, say n number of imaging senses and uh, proximity senses and vibration senses and all thousands of senses all over the body of the car. And all these senses within fraction of seconds are providing output, providing output back to the processor. All these senses are connected to the processor, the central processing unit, and these senses are providing output back to the central processing unit. And the central processing unit, the conventional method is it will transfer this data to the cloud. And at the other end, at the remote stage, at the, uh, at the administrator side or at the office, office of the Tesla, there will be some engineers, cloud engineers and some data scientists and all, they will receive the data through their cloud server and in their processing station or in their workstation. As I said earlier, in order to process this huge, enormous amount of data, you need a huge workstation with the dedicated GPUs, graphical processing units. You are already familiar with the gaming station and all. And in that, a workstation with the huge GPUs and all, 
they will process the data and they will send back the output okay based on the uh, images and sensor output we have received after five seconds of travel or after five meter of travels uh, there will be a huge roundabout and the steering how to turn 10 degree so this output they will produce and they will send back to cloud so that is the conventional method of how A is incorporated in these cloud-based systems, IoT-based sensor systems. But you know, just imagine how much time delay, what about the latency it will produce? The processor, the sensors will send back the output to the processor, processor how to send that to the cloud. And then at the remote station, a data scientist how to process the data and send how to send back the final output to the processor and the processor again how to send back that signal to the steering so you see it requires huge bandwidth because all these images and all requires huge bandwidth and all these images are directly sending to the remote station so it needs huge bandwidth requirements and then it has latency issues. So in order to rectify all these problems nowadays, this A, artificial intelligence is incorporated locally. Locally means you don't need a cloud server. It will, these processing, these processing I have mentioned just now, will do in real time or in situ. In situ means in the senses itself these processing of data and producing the output like the steering how to turn uh, 10 degree this will these all processing will be done in the processing unit inside the tesla car itself or inside the processing unit in which all these senses are connected you don't want to send that all these data to the cloud and you don't want to wait for processing to be done in the central processing unit in the remote station. It will be done in the small processor in which the senses are connected itself. This is called as edge AI. So this is how artificial intelligence is incorporated in IoT based senses itself. So edge AI is a combination of edge computing and artificial intelligence and it runs operations of local devices such as an internet of things device AI inside the device itself or a dedicated edge server edge server means a local server connected directly to the processing unit inside say for example inside the tesla I mean, car yes so it will be excuse me apart mask pipe Excuse me, is there any problem? Excuse me. Yeah, I think some noise. Yeah, ma'am, we can continue. Okay. So, so unlike the cloud, it is unaffected by latency and bandwidth issues. That is the beauty of Edge AA. Or in general, we can say Edge AA means running A algorithms on a local device that has edge computing capacity. So just imagine why in earlier conventional method, you have sent all these image data and all these uh, data from thousands of sen uh, senses to the remote station, because there only you have this large processing stations having a very heavy GPU and all, because this is huge data. And if you have to process huge data, you need that much, uh, you need a processor having that much potential. Those who have done uh, artificial intelligence based algorithm, deep learning algorithms in conventional computers already familiar with that. But now the question is how a small processor, a small IC inside the Tesla car that is, um, in which all senses and imaging cameras are connected. Uh, how this small processor is able to do this massive processing and produce the output? Because now there is no option to send that 
massive data to the remote station. This small processor has to process itself and produce the output in real time, in situ itself. So now, so please remember, EDGA needs data analytics, huge data processing, massive data processing in real time and in situ. So we need tools, specialized tools for that, which are close to IoT devices to collect, process, and analyze data at the source. Please remember this, at the source, rather than sending the data back to the cloud for further analysis and producing output. So what are the tools for required for that? So the requirements, the basic requirements are smart sensors and connected devices to collect data. Once the data collected before jumping into A algorithms, uh, I said data analytics is the important job that is that fine tuning the data, pre-processing the data. So we need, of course, we need hardware and software platforms for storing and preparing data Training is another important job when it comes to AI algorithms and processing the algorithms. So that means that small IC have to do this collection of data, preparing data, selecting algorithms, training the algorithms on a continuous basis and deploying models, developing models and changing new and new models. And the main applications, we are already familiarized with this, autonomous cars, our Tesla self-driving cars, Google also have uh, self-driving cars, surveillance and monitoring, our smart home, industrial internet of things, uh, that Mazda car manufacturing plant. So now I am familiarizing some of the edge AAs. So just go through this. Just note this and just uh, have a research in that. First thing is, the first, I will uh, just familiarize you some of the most commonly used edge AI devices. One is Intel Movidius Neural Compute Stick. This is a just plug and play development kit, which has two vision processing unit and 12 programmable shave cores. So it will be like this. So for parallel processing, it has 12 cores and it has two vision processing unit like our just I uh, think it is simple simply like our graphics processing unit so this small USB like stick has all these so once you connect this with your Raspberry Pi say your Tesla card the processor used is this Raspberry Pi just for an example so if this Raspberry Pi has to do all the AA, all the is massive data processing without sending the data to the remote station having uh, in which having massive graphic processing unit, it has just plug in this device, Intel Movidius device. And since it has visual vision processing unit or since it has inbuilt graphics processing unit, you can, do this massive data processing in situ, even if you are using a Raspberry Pi. And another one by developed by Google is Google Coral USB Accelerator. So it has TPU co-processor. Co TPU means ten tensor processing unit. So uh, because of the time limit, I am not going to explain what is in uh, tensors and all, just note this. Because so just imagine this is another graphic processing unit. So by just, this is also a plug and play device. And you can see within the limited power consumption, it will do massive operation. That means it will process millions of data within a fraction of seconds without consuming much power. So if you just connect this device, this USB, to one of the USB port of your low level processing unit like a Raspberry Pi or a very low level processing unit, its capacity is enhanced. That is why it is called as accelerator. And then 
like Raspberry Pi. We know Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. Like we have another set of single board computers itself having its own inbuilt graphic processing unit. So Google not only have this USB accelerator, but also have this Coral development board, which has system on chip plus machine learning uh, algorithms plus wireless connectivity. It has a fan, inbuilt fan also. So instead of using Raspberry Pi, if you want to process uh, uh, data, massive data, and if you want to develop a algorithms in situ, you can go for this type of uh, single board computers rather than conventional Raspberry Pis. And then this is the most famous one, NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit. And the advantage of this also have inbuilt GPU. These are, this is the advantage of this type of single board computers rather than our conventional single board computers. And the another advantage of this NVIDIA Jetson Nano development board is it will support CUDA toolkit. And uh, just if you, those who don't know what is CUDA, uh, this CUDA itself is a very, a large area. So just note this there and just CUDA PyTorch. Just note this and just search later. So this will support all these. So CUDA, just remember this is for parallel processing and for massive data processing. If we have the ability to have process data parallelly, it will be an added advantage. And then Okay, so these are, you can, um, in your Tesla car, at first you can try this Raspberry Pi with this accelerator, USB accelerator. Then I said, you can all, you don't want to worry about a Raspberry, a, a normal single board computer plus, plus an accelerator. You have a specialist single board computer itself available in market now, but, then have you ever imagined this Google self-driving cars and Tesla self-driving cars have something like that? It is, it definitely, it is not like that. Mostly these type of standalone systems, advanced standalone systems have system on chip or a single IC as a processor in which all sensors are connected and this small IC will do all the processing and all. So in that case, any Python programming or anything will support, we have to go for chip level programming. That is entry level, you have to convert all our A algorithms into C programs so that these types of these Qualcomm Snapdragon processes or MediaTek Helio processes, these are our ARM processes. And these are even better than GPUs because it is based on ASIC. ASIC means A accelerator application specific integrated circuit. So this is a processing unit specialized for artificial intelligence. So finally, you have to go for chip level programming to develop your final prototype. And if you have smart, uh, smartphones with you, these all smartphones are using either this IC, sorry, this IC or this IC. Okay. And this is another edge A device. This is if you are, if you have just note these terms, if you have to do some dedicated image or video processing or machine vision applications, this has an inbuilt camera. And this has a small microcontroller. This has an ARM board inbuilt, which will do uh, all sort of um, machine learning algorithms or artificial intelligence based algorithms. Plus it has inbuilt camera. So this is another type of edge AI device. You can, if as an AI enthusiast, if you have to embark in the world of industry 4.0 or 5.0 and how to become a engineer. You have to uh, get used with all these gadgets. Okay, with that, 
I am concluding. Um, and as a summary, I can uh, I would say, train a net. So training is with this huge massive data. At first, you have to train and develop a model, and for that, you can train it offline or in your central computing system having huge GPUs and all. In that system, you can train the model. And then you can upload that model into your low level system, like your Raspberry Pi or these type of single board computers. And the, because the execution is always remember when you work with the AI algorithms, always remember the execution is not that much computationally expensive. It is the training making it expensive. For training only, we need these type of massive GPUs, accelerators, and all. Once the training is more over, you can deploy that model in any low level uh, systems. And for training, if your system has some limitations, if your system has no GPU, inbuilt GPU or anything, you don't want to worry. You can use Google facilities and there are many cloud surveys dedicated to train AI models. So as a conclusion, I have tried to attempt to answer following questions. Why AI is important in IoT-based sensor system? how A can be incorporated in IoT-based sensor systems, and what is it? <laughs> and these are some of the reference textbooks. So the first textbooks, uh, even some GitHub codes are available. Uh, many exercise problems are available. And the second one, um, uh, is dedicated Python programming for uh, neural network for artificial intelligence based coding. And the third textbook is, uh, uh, it's just a uh, textbook for reading to get excited in the world of artificial intelligence. So these three are different categories of textbooks I have picked. So with that, I am concluding. Thank you all. Thank you for your uh, patience and listening and if you have uh, any doubts please ask uh, thank you ma'am it was a very informative and uh, uh, lucent session spiced up with all the youtube videos and other demos um, from sensors to ai to uh, AIT, AI in IoT based sensor networks to edge AI. It was a very clear flow, madam. If there are any questions, um, the participants are free to ask now. You can type in the questions if you have any issues with the audio. Yeah, I think most of the participants are beginners and they are they have entered into a very new different world. So uh, my advice is just go through the terms, technical terms I have introduced and have a vast search, have a rigorous search on all these topics. Because within the one hour, I can't go through all the technicalities of all these. I have just given a surface level presentation touching all the technical terms, that's it. But please note these technical terms and use that for further search. Sure, ma'am. So let's move on to the vote of, the, vote of thanks session if there are no questions. Raise your hands if any are typing on the 
Are there any questions? So with your permission, um, may I move to vote of thanks, madam? Okay, sure. Okay. And it is very extremely honored to uh, deliver my vote of thanks to my own teacher. Uh, it's been almost a decade I attended your classes and uh, you are still one of the best in the field, ma'am. Thank you for accepting the invitation of IEEE and uh, be with us tonight. Thank you, Lizzie, ma'am, and uh, wish you all the heights with your new venture, Lizzie Intelligent Solutions. And of course, your uh, uh, family YouTube channel as well. We are looking forward to it. Please up, keep updating. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, madam. Okay, thank you. And please uh, uh, go through my LinkedIn profile for all the recent updates and our YouTube channel for all these type of technical stories. Always we will try to uh, make it like a story so that even the common man can understand uh, about all these recent technologies and all. And um, our company, List Intelligent Solutions, is mainly focused on, as the name in place, focused on uh, developing intelligent solutions and providing training uh, in programming, particularly uh, training and internships in artificial intelligence. And for updates, for new updates, please go through my LinkedIn profile. And once again, thank you. Thank you all. And thank you, IEEE Kerala section for providing such an opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. It's such a wonderful weekend and uh, you all decided to make the best use of it. Uh, thank you one and all for using your time wise uh, here with us. Uh, please, wa uh, please watch Madam's videos uh, in your free time. Um, we planned it as an introductory session. So, um, and there was some time, time constraints as well. If anybody need any continuing sessions, kindly provide the feedback. We will be arranging it. Hope Madam won't mind, uh, won't mind to have further sessions as well. Yeah, uh, basically I am a teacher and I am always happy to teach new things. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. I also thank the IEEE team to make this even happen. Um, once again, thank you all. Uh, let's wind up now. It's been a long night. See you all again in our next talk. Thank you all. Good night.